Hello friends, welcome back to the Lindsay Made YouTube channel. Today we are going to make the Erin apron. As you may have noticed, there are two different styles in this pattern. I am wearing option A, which has this neck strap that loosens and tightens with a ladder lock buckle. It also has a dual adjustable side release buckle for the back, so it's easy on, easy off. It's got a large, two large pockets along the bottom, a cell phone pocket, and then two pen pockets for this style. Option B here is what my husband is wearing. This has three layers of pockets. This bottom row is 3D pockets. This is a smaller, flatter pocket in the middle. And then same thing with the cell phone pocket, two pen pockets. Give them a little swirl. The back has a crisscross design, so it's a little bit more comfortable on the shoulders if you have a lot of heavy stuff that you wanna put in your apron. And it also adjusts with that dual side release buckle as well. Pretty fun so if you're a beginner, you may want to start with option A, a little bit more um, adventurous, option B might be for you. But let's jump into it and we're going to go ahead and get started. First, I'd like to say thank you so much for purchasing the pattern for the Erin Apron from Lynn's Handmade Designs. I really appreciate the support. You just printed out your pattern and you've got a stack of papers, now what? This pattern was drafted a little bit differently than we do our typical bag patterns. We did it more like a garment pattern because of the apron size being so big. So on page one, you'll notice that you have a printed layout guide so that it's four across by the length of all the, however many pattern pieces you wanna print out. If you wanna cut the rectangle shapes by measurement, by all means, or if you just basically need the apron pattern, then you'll just print page one through 16. Now, before we actually cut it out and print all pages, I would encourage you to just print page one and go ahead and measure that test box. We want it exactly two inches. If it's an eighth inch off, that over the span of your entire pattern piece will be a big difference. So I've seen people where they're off a measurement and they're like, eh, it's close enough. And then they get upset that their bag didn't fit appropriately and the pieces didn't line up like puzzle pieces. So I can't emphasize enough that this two inch test box is super important before moving on to any other steps. So once you've verified that your two inch test box is accurate, go ahead and print out the remaining pieces. And then you can kind of lay them out just like the grid here shows. Now you can tape your pattern pieces together or you can glue them however you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming these down so that I can butt up the corners. You'll see in each corner there are these little um, quarter circles, if you will, and those will all line up on as you tape them together to form complete circles. So continue to cut out the rest of your pattern pieces and then we'll align them in the rows of four and tape them together. So there are two options for aprons in this pattern and I'm gonna construct them both simultaneously for this video tutorial because a lot of it is done the same way except option B is just a little bit more complicated. It's got three rows of pockets and the crisscross back um, option and then option A just has the giant pocket on the bottom as well as that top pocket. So I would consider option A um, more beginner friendly and easier to do. Let's talk about the pieces needed for option A here. As you can see, I have my apron piece cut out. I did cut the lower pocket and the upper pocket. We have two waist straps cut to equal length, and then we have two neck straps to allow it to adjust around your neck. We have a ladder lock buckle that's gonna allow the adjustment around the neck, and then we have a dual release, dual side release buckle. So, this is important for both option A and B because it allows each strap on each side to be cinched to tighten. So I do write for the dual, so make sure you've got a slot, two slots on one side and on the other as well. For option B here, we have two really long straps cut equal length. We have two strap loops. This is gonna allow those back crisscross straps to pass through and cinch on the back. Just like option A, we call for that 
dual adjustable side release buckle. This is an optional part of the pattern. It's the strap keeper. Um, this is the only piece where we're using vinyl cork or leather, something with a firmer temper, meaning it's not really floppy and drapey, but you're gonna need two pieces of that for just to kind of hold the strap in the back for it to, to cross through. And then this is also another optional piece. I'm using some um, cording, but you can use twill tape, ribbon, half inch, seatbelt webbing, something like that. But this is gonna give you an option to hang your apron. We put this up near the top of the bib part of the apron because there's just no really easy way to hang your apron like you can with option A where you just hang the loop on your, your hook. So I would encourage you to add one of these because I think you might get frustrated when you go to take off your apron and it's kind of awkward to hang. Now let's talk about the ideal materials for this apron. So as you can see in the instructions, it's written for single-sided. What I do like about that is it makes customizing the apron extremely easy. Adding or removing pockets after the fact, you can still do that versus aprons that are sewn right sides together and turned. So for the ideal materials, I would encourage you to stick with a nice heavy-duty canvas, waxed canvas, bonded nylon type, anything that's like a repel type material are, are my, my preferences. The wax canvas here is more like an industrial like looking, um, typically great for men's woodworking apron. Um, and then this one, this type of material, the bonded repel type, kind of forms to the body a little bit better and um, drapes nicer. Of course, with wax canvas, with use over time, it will get soft and kind of adjust to your body's movements and stuff. But please keep in mind, I did not test it in quilt cotton. I don't recommend it in quilt cotton. Anything that's gonna need additional interfacing, I just really don't recommend for this project. A couple of optional items that I have here. Um, I do wanna add a little woven label. I can stick it into the side of a pocket. Totally your preference, but I just usually like to add a little personal touch, something like that. I have a couple of rivets here. Um, again, optional, but I do like to add them at stress points on the top of each of those pockets. And then for this apron in particular, I have this itty bitty baby D ring or a corset ring that I'm gonna to add to the top of my pocket because I like to add a clip here and attach little snip scissors so that I'm not losing them. But just optional, certainly not needed. Probably the most time consuming part of this whole construction of the apron is really just adding the landmarks and folding the edges. So. Um, as part of the prep work, we did talk about marking our lines on the back and then we're going to fold the raw edges in so that we don't have any raw edges on our finished apron here. And then we're transferring the paper pattern marks onto our pocket pieces here. Now for this repellent type material, I did have to draw my lines and I'm going to end up using some double-sided tape because it just helps hold those folds best because you can't really iron this and it's gonna hold. Um, with wax canvas, um, I've explained this in other videos, I love it because you can just kind of mark your lines with like uh, a tool. So I've already done that. I've just kind of scored along the wax and with my awl here and we're gonna fold all of those edges and then um, get all of our pockets prepped and the edges prepped before we jump right into sewing. And then once you sew, it's very fast coming together. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep all of the pocket pieces. So we're gonna take the raw edges and fold it to these first lines that we've marked on each of our um, pockets. And then we'll do the bottom edge followed by the double fold of the top edge. For this next process, I do intend to speed up the video because it's kind of a tedious, long process. It really is the, the part of the whole apron that takes the longest. But just want to remind you, we are folding the raw edge to the line. This isn't our fold line. So take that raw edge, lay it down on top of that first line, and do that around the entire perimeter. Now that we've got all of our pockets prepped, everything's folded to the back side, and we've got our double fold along the top, we're gonna go ahead and sew along the top edge, securing that double fold. So I am sewing with the fabric wrong side up, 
And again, I'm about an eighth inch from this bottom folded edge. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and prep the bottom pocket on option B. So you should have transferred your markings from your pattern piece or based on the written instructions. We have three vertical lines drawn and then we have itty bitty lines next to those drawn lines. These are our pinch lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to pinch along these small markings and create a crease that length and we're gonna lay it close right on top of the drawn line. So I really like this step using wax canvas because it's got that little memory. I can just pinch it and drop it. We're gonna pinch again from this side on those lines, hold a line. You can use your iron if you're using a different material or you're just gonna really have to focus on using clips. And then go ahead and Drop that fold again at that line. This is creating those pleated pockets. So these folds should be butted up, and then I will clip them along that bottom edge here. And along the top here. We're going to do the same thing with this next line. So we're going to find those little markings, pinch it to fold a crease. And lay it down on the long line. Go grab the small pinches on the other side. Same thing. All right, last set of pleats here. the KB. There we go. So now we have these two have a double pleat and then the side pockets are a little bit wider but only that single pleat. So before we do all of our folding I do like to start with the curved edges first and I don't have you draw lines there because anytime you're folding along a curve you can easily get some ripples if you're taking a huge fold. So I'm basically saying to fold a quarter inch and then just do another quarter inch fold. So just the max amount that you're not getting ripples. So if I try and go a really big curve, it's going to start to want to um, like pinch and fold on itself. So just keep it narrow. We just want a finished edge here. And I'm just going to fold it a quarter inch just like this. And this is what I love about wax canvas is this one's like a beeswax, so it's stiffer and drier, but it will hold its fold. I really don't need clips for this. But now we're going to go ahead and sew an eighth inch from that folded edge and repeat on the opposite side. So for this pink apron, I am using the double-sided tape to kind of hold that first quarter inch fold. Um, and depending on your machine and the type you're using, the type of tape you're using, it could gum up your needle. So you may just want to stick with clips or if your material can be ironed, 
go that route, but I found that making this apron and using tape, my, my domestic machine was perfectly fine sewing through this. So this first row, like I said, I'm doing my quarter inch fold, and then I'll get clips and hold that second quarter inch fold. But as you can see, it's gonna start to want to ripple along this curve, so just take um, your time so we don't sew any ripples. Hold that with clips and we'll go ahead and sew it. So after we've sewn the curves, then we're gonna go ahead and continue folding the rest of the edges to the first line along the sides first, then the bottom, then the top. So this double fold on the side, um, we're just gonna clip in place. Particularly for option A, we're not sewing this side edge yet. Um, but we will be sewing the bottom um, next. But we're just going to continue the, the folding pattern like this for the rest of the apron. And then do not sew anything until I tell you that next step. But after I've done the side, I'm going to do the bottom. So up to this point, I have folded in the sides first. Then I have repeated with the bottom edge and then also the top edge. Nothing is sewn yet. For option A, we're just gonna sew along the bottom edge. For option B, we can sew both along side edges and the bottom edge, but we're not gonna sew the top edge because we do need to add the strap at a later step. So for this next part, go ahead and sew along the bottom edge for option A and along the sides and bottom edge for option B. So I'm just sewing along the bottom edge only for this option A. This area can be a little bulky because you've got the double fold here and also um, the double fold from this bottom edge. So just go slow over that corner there and sew an eighth inch from this folded edge. There's another thick area on the opposite end. Just kind of go slow. All right, that is all the sewing we're doing for the um, perimeter at this point. I like to get the next strap out of the way first, so we're just gonna go ahead and prep that before we get started on everything else. So you'll notice the waist straps are the same and they're almost the same length as the neck strap. So go ahead and find the two that are identical and immediately set them to the side so you don't get them confused because ask me how I know, it's easy to confuse them. All right, so take the long piece and your ladder lock buckle. So it's important to identify the correct side versus the wrong side. So this one has the little concave portion and this gridded area up here. This is the wrong side. You wanna make sure this is all flat and we're on the correct side. So now that we're oriented correctly, right side up, we're gonna take the longer neck strap and we're gonna go ahead and thread it up through that first hole on the right hand side. We're gonna go over that bar and down through the second hole. Then we're gonna pull it to the back side like this and we're gonna do a um, double fold, a one inch double fold to the back side, just kinda like this. And then I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I just kind of do like a Z stitch. I come down here, back stitch, and down here to secure the webbing in place. All right, this portion is ready for the um, final step, so set this aside. Okay, so for option A, we still have our sides just clipped, ready to go, but unsewn, as well as the top. Option B, just the top is unsewn. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our pockets before we focus on those straps. So I'm gonna flip this apron around, and we're gonna measure three inches down from this folded edge, and we're gonna lay the top pocket centered at that three inch mark. So I've already added my stitching lines here and I've folded in the center to find the center of this and I've also phone, folded my apron in half and, and formed a crease here so I can keep the center of my apron 
obvious. So I'm going to lay the center of this pocket down at the three inch mark, lining up these centers. Depending on your materials, you can pin it in place or I've got some double sided tape again that I'll just put along this bottom edge to hold it in place. And then we're going to go ahead and sew the perimeter edges, leaving the top edge open. But when we come up to the corners here, we're going to take a few stitches over and pivot and go back down and around for another row of stitches a quarter inch away from the first set. This will encase those raw edges on the underside so that when you look into your pocket, you won't see any of those raw edges. For those of you working with wax canvas, since I can't use double-sided tape on wax canvas, and I don't really need it for the folds, but for things like this, it's kind of hard to poke holes with um, pins and stuff. So I'll just take my sharp awl here and just kind of scratch out of the little corners as my landmarks and just make sure that as I'm sewing, I stay within those little landmarks. All right, so I'm do dropping my needle up in the top corner here. I always start on the right-hand side. And we're just gonna sew the edges. I'm getting as close to this folded edge as possible. When you come to the corner, go ahead and drop your needle in and keep hand cranking it towards you until your needle is on the upswing before you do your pivot. So we do want the needle down in our material, but we want it on its way up so that we don't skip that, that corner where you get that dreaded skip stitch. We don't want that, so make sure your needle's on its way up. Same thing, I'm just going to hand crank into the corner here and then make sure it's on the upswing and pivot. Pivot at the corner, I'm going to take a few stitches over, one, two, until I'm about a quarter inch away and then we're coming back down and around. Now I'm ready to create my two pen pockets here. I'm going to start at the bottom and come all the way up and then I tend to backstitch down to this line and end my stitching down here. These are stress points going in and out of the pocket and I don't really want my backstitch up here and where it can have a chance to kind of unravel over time. We want to end it down here. We're going to stick with the option A apron to finish adding the pocket. So from the bottom we are going to measure three inches up and we're going to center the bottom pocket at that line as well. So if you are making option B, feel free to skip to um, the next section using the timestamps in the description box below. Again, I have a piece of double-sided tape along this bottom to kind of help hold this pocket in place centered. And just like that top pocket, we are going to go ahead and sew two rows of stitching 
along the perimeter. I start on that right hand side. I'm going to come down, pivot along the top, and come back here. But before we continue along here at the middle point, I'm going to go up just lateral to the center line, around and back down, and then finish off that second row of stitching. Well, that happened. I forgot it. Don't be like me. Add your label before you add your pocket. This would be the time if you're going to add the rivets, you're going to punch holes in between the stitching line along each of these top of the pockets here and set those rivets before we work on the straps. But I'm going to jump to option B's pockets. So if you're just doing option A, you can go ahead and skip ahead using the timestamps below once again. Moving on to attaching the two remaining pockets on option B. So this one is a little bit more complicated than option A, obviously, because there are the two pockets. And the bottom is pleated and it has to, and it is stitched on these stitching lines. So don't go out of order and go rogue. I encourage you to follow these next steps closely so that you can get your pockets right. So from the bottom of the top pocket, we're gonna measure three inches down and we're gonna place the middle pocket centered at that three inch mark. I do have my label in my hand to remind me to go ahead and add it. I don't wanna forget it on this one. So I'm just gonna add it in this little side seam. Just like the top pocket, we are going to go ahead and sew the perimeter on the three sides and then come back around for a second row of stitching. And then we'll go ahead and create those four individual pockets as we sew up these three marked lines. All right, I've pulled my machine away from the wall to give myself some working space because again, this is wax cabinet. It's kind of stiff, but I'm not afraid to kind of crunch it up and maneuver it under my machine. But if you're on a domestic sewing machine sewing with wax canvas, feel free to get your blow dryer and blast it with heat to make it really soft and much easier to work with in these next steps. Measure from the top of this middle pocket, three inches down, and you're gonna take your bottom pocket and lay it centered on top at that line here. Now, we're gonna have to unclip our pleats because those drawn lines now line up with our sewn lines on our middle pocket. So before we sew the pocket in place, those are the first stitching we need to do. We have to go attach the pocket on top of our middle pocket's seam. You can see it a little bit better now. So I'm gonna unclip these, take it to the sewing machine, peel these back a little bit so you can see where we're working and I'm gonna follow the stitching line on top of that drawn line to the edge and back stitch well. Do that with all three markings. Okay, so since I can't really pin very well or do double-sided tape to keep my pocket in place, I did just kind of draw a line along the bottom so that I can keep my pocket oriented on that line so it doesn't shift and become wonky because we're doing these vertical stitches first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just unclip so I can see my center line and make sure it is lined up right on top of that previous stitching. And we're just gonna sew right in the center there. Keeping that bottom edge kind of aligned, you can go ahead and press those back in place and clip that one. Okay, aligning the bottom edge, open this up and drop your needle right on your previous stitching. Realign those pleats and shimmy on over. Line that bottom, 
or if it's taped in place, it shouldn't have shifted, but mine is just free floating, so I just want to be mindful of the bottom edge. And put it back over where my stitching is. Now, go ahead and kind of reposition your pleats right on top of each other, particularly along the bottom. And now we're going to go ahead and sew the perimeter, doing the two rows of stitching, and then back up. Well, that was poor planning on my part. This is a longer label, so you don't really want to put it halfway because this pocket covers it. Really, you want to keep closer to the top edge. So I think I can't leave it down there partially covered. I'm going to go ahead and seam rip it and move it up a little bit. Crisis averted. I just seam ripped and moved my label up. Don't be like me. Now, just a reminder, I'm, you can add the optional rivet, so I'm going to add them to these corners here here, here, and here, as well as on the pink apron. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that little tiny D-ring on my pink apron. All right, since I decided to seam rip the other seam on option B, I went ahead and seam rip this seam and added the label. Moving on. Now for option A, we're gonna add the waist strap. So grab those two long waist straps. Pieces. Flip your apron to the wrong side. We're going to thread one of these small edges up under this fold. We have not sewn this because we're going to add it now. So I put it kind of up to the top of this fold and then I'm going to fold it back on itself and go this way and then clip that in place like this. So then we're, when we're going to sew up this final edge here, I'm going to start at the top here. I don't want to start at the webbing and there's a noticeable gap from the top here to the webbing. So starting up here, come down along this edge and just sew a little box around it and then continue to sew the remaining edge here. And you're gonna repeat that with the opposite strap as well. Now you can kind of see why we add the straps when we do because if these were just floating wherever they could go freely, we probably would catch it in our pocket. In my prototyping phase, I did that and I often caught them in my stitching. So we do this last. All right, so I've dropped my needle at the very tippy top because I don't want that noticeable gap. We're going to go ahead and backstitch well, sew over that folded edge of webbing here. As soon as I get to the bottom, remember to kind of pull your needle on the upswing and pivot. Just going to sew a little box. And then I'm going right back over my previous line of stitching right here. It'll reinforce that area as well. And we'll just finish up this edge. Repeat with the other now side. For both options, the neck area in the top portion of the apron is done the same way. So I'm going to show you on option A how we're going to orient the neck strap here. So it is important that the buckle be face up. So this is the flat side. It's going to be face up. And which side you put this long piece on will be determined how you want it on your neck. So if you're right-handed and you prefer the buckle to be on the right-hand side, you're going to orient it this way. 
if you're left-handed and you want it on the opposite side, you're going to move it over there. So I am right-handed, so I'm going to go ahead and put this strap tucked under this folded edge, butt it up to the fold, and then I'm pulling it back up on itself in this area. Just how we did the, um, the waist straps. Just kind of go in like this. Unclip those in place. This one doesn't matter. Um, so we're just going to tuck that butted up under here and then folded up top as well. Okay, so now we're going to start our stitching here. We're going to go across the bottom of the webbing. We're going to crisscross up here, go across here, and then back down a little figure eight motion, and we're going to back over our stitch across the bottom edge and repeat the little Z figure eight and end here. Now the only difference between this and option B is the straps are way longer, so I tend to coil them so they just are a little bit more manageable and stay out of the way, and I did tuck the little hang loop in the center also butted up to that folded edge but just like on the other apron we're going to start here figure eight cross figure eight and end there so this area's got a little bit of bulk there's multiple layers and folds so i'm going to go slow until i can kind of get up over this area don't like that Okay, once I get to the edge of the webbing, that's when I'm going to go ahead and pivot. So bring my needle on the upswing. We're going to go across to the top fold. Upswing, pivot. Back down to where we started. And that was thick, so I'm going to hand crank that. And I'm going right back over the stitching I just did. And now we're going to sew across. and finish coming off the edge. There you go. Now we want to go ahead and attach these next straps. So you're going to loop it, make sure to keep it straight so it doesn't get twisted or anything. So a nice loop like this. Again, this is right side facing up. You're going to take the opposite end here and thread it through the second slot through the back. You're going to come up around that bar and back through the front. So as long as you did this correctly, it locks with tension. So now you can pull it to your desired height. We're going to fold this, a double fold to the back side, and stitch so the next strap is done. I just installed the top straps. Now we have to eat add the loops on the side. So grab those shorter pieces of webbing and we're going to go ahead and do a quarter inch fold to the back side and hold those with clips just like this. And the other side. Now just a reminder if you have not heat singed your um, nylon or poly webbing you want to do that now. Cotton you can't really heat singe but go ahead and 
splash a lighter across that so that it doesn't unravel. But you're going to do that to both pieces. And then we're going to lay it, butt it up against the edge here. The top edge goes to the corner fold there, the bottom edge here. And we're going to sew a row of stitches, back stitching well there and there, and repeat with the other side. So I want my folds to the back side. And we align it in that corner right up to the edge. Reclip that in place. Same down here. Back stitching well at the beginning and the end there. Now repeat with the other side. This next step for option B is optional, but I do really like this strap keeper on the back of the apron because those straps are really big and this just kind of keeps them where they need to be. So you should cut two um, identical pieces. We're going to lay them wrong sides together and you'll notice each edge is not the same um, length. So what we want to do is we want to place clips on those shorter lengths because those are the ones we're going to sew. It just serves kind of as a reminder. I know for me, um, if I don't clip them, I could easily get disoriented and actually sew the wrong sides. But these are longer openings, and that's where the strap is going to go through on each side. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew as close to the edge as possible, an eighth inch along these clipped sides. Making sure to orient in front of you so that the shortest cut sides are going left to right. So that these are the shortest sides. We're going to go ahead and loop. So we're going to make sure we follow the strap and keeping it perfectly straight and not twisted. We're going to pass it. So again, orient myself. These are the short edges. We're going to pass it in between this little channel here through to the other side. Just like that. Still nice and right, so let's do this one. Make sure it's not twisted in any way. And we're going to go through this corner. There we go. So it's still oriented correctly. Now the left side is going to go to the right loop and the right side is going to go to the left loop. So again, keeping it oriented so it's not twisted, we're going to feed this end through this loop here, just like this. And this side. So now both our straps are done for option A and option B. Now we're just going to add the buckle and you will be done. So make sure you're uh, oriented correctly. This is the wrong side. I feel like it does kind of curve just a smidge so it's easier to tell, but these little ridges go along the, up, the, the top. So keeping my strap untwisted, I'm going to come up through the back side second slot. So we're going to go up this way and then back down through the first slot of this side. And then if you give this side a tug, it is locked, so we know that we're oriented correctly. So same thing with this side. We're going to go through the second slot through the back, down through the first slot, and pull, and pull on both sides. If you've got tension, you know you've done it right. So 
now we're going to fold this a double fold to the back side, half inch, quarter inch, doesn't matter, sew that on each side and adjust to suit the wearer and you're done. All done. I am so proud of us. We did it. Not without some mishaps, but we did it. Good job.